What's up guys, I'm Mel here back in the studio and today I'm going to be walking you through my remake of Like I Do by Martin Garrix, Brooks and David Guetta. Let's get into it. Okay, so welcome back to the channel guys, and if you guys didn't know, I made a remake of Like I Do. Um, if you haven't heard that already, I put it out uh, maybe a month ago or so, so I will link that down below. But check that out if you haven't heard it already. If you have, that's awesome. I've gotten uh, an insane feedback on it. Uh, really, really positive. Everyone says it's a sick track, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. Otherwise, basically what I'm going to do today is... Um, I uploaded the video uh, on Like I Do, and I kind of did a quick playthrough, but today's video, I'm basically going to treat this track as if it's my own. I know you guys have probably seen a lot of master classes. Uh, Martin Garrix has done it, Brooks, and many others at festivals like ADE and, and different events like that. So basically, I have this project, which I made. Um, it's a <laughs> pretty fucking massive project. Uh, it's 74 tracks. Um, and so yeah, I'm basically just going to pretend that this is my track and I'm going to walk you through it just like I would if this was a masterclass, if it's ADE and I'm up on a stage and kind of walking you through my own track. Of course, it's not, well, it's my track because I made it, but it's a remake, so it's it's not an original, um, if that makes sense. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Um, the way I'm going to be doing this, actually, I know probably a lot of you are wanting to just see the drop and how I made the drop. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second, but I actually want to start with the beginning because this is how I started the track and I'm going to kind of run you through the track in order of how I made it. Um, so I started with the with the intro uh, because this is the extended mix, then I went to the drop and then I started filling everything in. So let's shut up now and dive right into the masterclass. All right, so here's the intro. I'm just going to play this for you so you can kind of get a sense of what we're working with and then I'll jump into all the individual elements. Okay, so that's the intro. Um, now, this is pretty simple, uh, and for the most part, and then there's one thing that's a bit complicated that I'll show you in just a second. So, first of all, I'm just going to break this down, and uh, these are the main synths. I think I have like three or four synths playing. So it sounds like this. It's pretty simple. Um, I just created these all in silent one. Yeah, so I just have three synths playing. So this is the first one right here. It's kind of centered. Uh, basically, it's just saw chords. Let's see, is that just one? Uh, no, I have, okay, saw chords with a tiny bit of white noise and very cut off. So I use the cutoff filter uh, and um, yeah, pretty simple stuff. Uh, then there's the next one. This is pretty similar. It's a bit wider, a bit more detuned, so it kind of fills out uh, the spectrum. And then this last one is actually pretty interesting. Um, this is, I call it a leafy texture is what I named it, um, but it's it's basically just white noise and it has some delay on it. So check it out what it sounds like. It's pretty quiet in the mix, so hopefully you can hear that. But um, it's basically just a, a tick that I created with, with white noise. So if I play these two synths without the white noise, this is what it sounds like. And you probably don't notice a big difference, but if I put this back on now, listen to it. So it's pretty subtle, but in, in the full mix, it really fills it out, and it's not something you necessarily hear, but um, yeah, it, it, it makes quite a bit of a difference. Um, and that's, that's a big tip. Um, when in doubt, use white noise. Uh, <laughs> accent things with white noise. Um, it really fills out the frequencies. So, yeah. Then I have this little voice thing going on here. I think this is, yeah, cashmere sample. So it's side chained. Um, just really quiet in the background. Uh, if I add it with these synths, it, you can barely hear it. I just added it. I thought it sounded cool and it sort of gives it like an organic sort of texture. Um, yeah, I guess I also added another voice that kind of fades in or something. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now this is the really cool thing. Um, if you listen to the original track, it has this weird like uh, growly sort of thing and I tried to recreate it as best as I could and honestly, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So check it out. Okay. 
Okay, so this right here is pretty weird. Um, I'm gonna try, I have like a lot of, I have a lot of uh, effects and stuff on it. So first I'm going to turn these effects off and I'll just try to play it uh, without any effects. Um, yeah, so it's just weird. I think this is from maybe Kashmir or something. I, I downloaded from Splice. Weird kind of growl sample. And it sounds pretty pretty lame on its own. Um, if I just play it like this, it sounds pretty stupid. I just have it in the rhythm um, that it's supposed to be in. It, it, it sounds pretty shit, to be honest. Okay, so the first thing I did is I added this automation clip. Now, this is just the volume. So you can see the volume is going to go up and down. Yeah, it's pretty quiet in the mix. And then let me turn these effects on. Um, I'm going to turn everything on except for this right here. Okay, so basically what I have going on is I have this, which is a really weird EQ. It's basically putting it in a band pass. So that kind of filters it out. Uh, then I'll show you this in just a second. Um, I'm widening it with a stereo enhancer. I guess I'm <laughs> widening it more with a stereo shaper. Some OTT to just shape the sound. Sound Geyser to kind of make it sound more compressed. Um, reverb, just to put it in a little bit of a space. More saturation and more more EQ, I guess. Um, so with all that, it sounds like this. Starting to sound pretty good. But now I'm going to add this last thing. So this is a, an automation clip which controls this filter. So this is a cutoff filter. And now listen to it with this automation clip. It really gives it that kind of wow wow sound. It's like uh, talking. And I know these two automation clips look really weird um, this volume and this cutoff, but uh, yeah, that's what makes that intro sound. So it's probably not the most important thing. It's probably not the reason you're watching this video, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys. Other than that, we just have some drums. Um, I have the kick and the clap and some pretty basic stuff. Uh, I think the kick I put like a high pass filter on, so versus over here. Um, yeah, so some of the elements in the in the in the intro just kind of have a, a high pass on it. So then the intro sort of builds up. Um, the filters start filtering everything in, and then we get to this part here. And then it just goes crazy. Okay, so this is the part, essentially what this is right here is this is almost like the drop, just without the lead, and uh, the the notes are a little bit different. Um, but what I did is I basically started out with this section knowing that once I created this, um, it, it basically isolated the bass and the chord sounds for me. So I knew once I could nail that down, then I could sort of copy and paste this over into the drop, and then I would have a much better foundation for the drop. I could start adding the leads on top, and it would already sound really good. Um, so I'll, I'll go to the drop in just a second, but um, just here I can show you all the bass layers and even some of the chords. So let's start with the main bass. Pretty much, let's see, I think, yeah, most of my bass layers are actually in silent and then I have, well, it's about half and half silent and serum. So let me just isolate all these for you. So as I'm going through here, these are all uh, presets I made myself just in Silent 1. I really like Silent, it's super easy to like tweak stuff and um, it's the first like real synth I ever got. So I'm pretty familiar with it and I don't know, I just kind of as I went I'm trying to create different cool sounds that all add up together. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of them. And then uh, I usually like to add some serum layers. These are some cool ones I added later on that just kind of give it a little more grit. Typically I use serum for like uh, more sort of like growly stuff, um, FM synthy stuff, just stuff you can't quite get in silence. Yeah, like that that's the sound you cannot get in silence. 
And then I guess I just added some different layers here. So that was super cool. Um, I was pretty happy with that. Uh, let me show you some of the mixing on that. So for this, I actually have two different buses. I don't know why I separated it out into two buses, but anyway, these are uh, part of the bases here. And I have these ones over here. I guess these are kind of the more centered ones. So uh, here's this, and without effects, it sounds like this. And here's with effects. So it sounds quite a bit different. Uh, I have some EQ, some OTT, really boosting the mids there. Camel Crusher, uh, pretty pretty high on the settings here, giving it a lot of saturation and um, compression. A lot <laughs> a lot more saturation, uh, Sausage Fattener, um, boosting some of the low mids, uh, kind of making it more mono, and then I just have a filter. So that's those bases, and then I have these which are kind of the more mono bases. And as you can see, I actually put these um, pretty mono in the mix on, on the mixer track itself. So here's without effects. And so I really kind of saturated the crap out of it. Okay, so I have a, an EQ taking out a lot of the mids. Uh, OTT, Camel Crusher again. I think I actually, these mixer buses I might have just copied over because I have a little uh, uh, blood overdrive on that. And then cutting off the high end. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty much with these bases. I'm kind of cutting off a lot of the high end. And I think that's it. I guess tiny bit more EQ there. Yeah. So once I had that main baseline, I was pretty happy with that. And then it was time to start adding some more. I felt like there needed to be some accent stuff. So this is the next layer. And this is kind of a weird one. Take a listen. So what this is, it's... I don't know. The way I think of it, it's kind of like a mix between basses and chords almost. Um, I think, yeah, I guess these are both silent. Uh, here, let me just play this for you. I just tried to get some very like crunchy, white noisy, distorted sounds. And the idea with that is um, I just like, they're almost like stabs. So on some of the notes, kind of when the chords hit, it's like an extra, widens the bass up, gives it some top end, and um, just really fills out the frequency. So we'll take a listen just with the bass. Sounds pretty sick already. And then we add this on top. So hopefully you can hear there, it just really, it's like just a big punch. It makes it sound way more aggressive. So. There's that layer, and then the third layer I put is actually these growls, which I created in Serum. And these, um, I just made them. They're in, they're in Serum. This sounds like this. And I have, I actually have three. It's a really cool one. And then that's very kind of gritty texture. Um, and the idea with this is that if you listen to the original track, you can kind of hear these growls. I'm guessing they might just be like bass shots, but I I don't know. I just like using synths, and I have more control if, if I use synths instead of using one shots. I might not always have the right one shot. So, um, yeah, it just gives it like this cool texture. I'll play you the bass line just by itself. And now we add these in. Um, yeah, so as you can hear, and I, I know Brooks talks about this a lot, but... Once you start adding these, you know, you have the main baseline and then you start adding these kind of textures on top, on top. Um, he, he calls it like you're making your bass talk. Um, and it, you know, you start adding all these layers up and it, it starts getting buried in the mix, but it's like these little subtle textures make a big, big difference. So, uh, yeah, that's super cool. And I really, I just, I just think that sounds sick. Okay. Obviously then we have a sub bass down here. Cannot forget the sub bass. And then I have a bunch of different layers of one shots that I added on top. Um, they're pretty low in the mix, but they just add that kind of texture that helps the bass stand out. Um, what's up here? Oh yeah, I have this sample. It's like an electric toothbrush. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty weird. I don't know why I used it. Um, yeah, it honestly sounds really shit, but it just 
gave the mix some sort of grit. Uh, yeah, so it's an electric toothbrush. And I use that sample all the time now. Um, okay. So let's uh, put this all together. And this is what all the bases like sound together. Sick. All right. So those are the bases. And that's pretty much it. I'll go maybe a little more detail in the drop. Um, but let's move up now to the chords. So here are the chords, and what happens in the intro, they're not playing all the time. They're basically like stabs, so they're just hitting on certain notes. Uh, here, let me play the bass line with it as well, just to give it a little context. Okay, so here's the first layer of chords, and I think this has three or four layers. Uh, yeah, I think just three. So here's the first one. I uh, made it in silence. It's basically just saw chords and a good bit of white noise. Um, just gives it that kind of crunchy high end. Um, pretty simple. The next one is actually a Rhodes piano, just from the FL keys, the stock plugin. And on there, I think I just have some distortion. Yeah, distorted piano is what I called it. Yeah, some EQ, OTT and uh, just a, a shit ton of distortion, honestly. So this is without, and then just distorted. Just makes it really crunchy. Um, okay, and then down here, I have a Garrix pad sort of preset. Just that kind of typical gritty saw sound with no white noise, um, sort of clean saw sound. And all together, again, they sound like this. And then on these ones, I felt like it needed a little bit of accent, wasn't quite powerful enough, so I added these ones too. And this is basically just, I think, yeah, is it just two layers? Um, that uh, it's, as you could hear, a lot wider, a lot more detuned. Um, so together it just makes a really powerful kind of super saw sound. Um, wide and windy is what I called the preset. Very, kind of a pleasant sound. I kind of like that. Let's actually, wait, let me solo that. That's pretty dope. Okay, I like that one. And then the other one, it's kind of a, that's weird. It's like a weird cutoff synth. So, um, anyway, then together they sound like this. And yeah, those are the chords. I did something really weird up here. It was that, uh, I did like this super distorted layer. Sounds like this. Um, it sounds pretty shit, and honestly, by itself, it makes no sense. Um, these like little. Uh, so I don't even know why I did that, but um, if you play it in the context of the mix, it kind of just like adds a little bit of uh, extra frequencies and texture and stuff. So. Here's what it sounds like. I think the, the most part you notice it is right here. Um, yeah, so super weird sound. Uh, what did I even, I don't know what that is. Silent layer. Yeah, I just really, yeah, I completely distorted it as much as I could. So super weird layer, but I don't know, it worked, whatever. And then the last thing we have in this uh, kind of big intersection is this fill here. So I'll just play you uh, one bar. So this part right here. Um, okay, there's a couple things going on here. The first is these snares. I have this. And so this big kind of down snare. I have a couple one shots. But the main thing that's going on here is this sound. And I created this again in silent. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just gonna stop saying that because most of the stuff I create in silent. Um, but uh, it's basically, I think it's some square waves, some square waves, and then white noise, and I just distorted them together. So if I take this off, the distortion is off. It sounds kind of similar, but then with it back on, just gives it like that super crunchy, kind of round, gnarly sound. Um, yeah, and then it has a cutoff filter on it, and um, anyway, 
it's a really like it's a weird sound i would never think of making it on my own but listening to the track uh i think i got pretty close and it like little details like that make a huge difference um so yeah and let me see i don't know what mixing i have on it i have some eq some really weird eq uh ott more eq and then stereo enhancer yeah it's pretty much in the middle without that so it spreads it out um yeah so then that's that and then of course i have the drums but uh, we'll get to that in just a second uh when we go to the drop so that's it let's move to the drop Okay, so this is the drop, and this is what you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. Um, and and like I said, basically what I tried to do is I had the section from the intro, and once I had that, I could sort of copy and paste that over. Now, it wasn't 100% because, as you'll hear, if, if you listen to the bass line like this... The bass line is different, the chords are different, in the intro it's sort of repeating, um, it's like kind of going up and down and up and down, so it's not playing the full chord progression, but essentially I could, I had all the sound design done, or most of it, maybe I could come tweak it back later, um, but I sort of took those presets, pasted it into a new pattern, and then could start working from there. So I'm not going to go through all those bass presets again, because they're the same. Um, I have pretty much the same stuff, um, all the growls and everything that we just talked about. So that's that. Um, but we can come and move on to the chords now because these chords, uh, I think they're similar to what I had before, but there's a couple different presets. So let's look at those. So these chords, um, these are a, a bit weird, and I'll explain why in just a second. But I had the bass line, I had the drums. And I started working on the chords, and this is something that actually held me up for quite a while on this track. Um, part of it is sound design, right? So you have the actual sounds that you're playing, and you know a big part when you're listening back to remakes is I'm trying to be very, you know, listen very closely. Is the sound in mono? Is the sound in stereo? How wide is it? And then of course you're listening to all the textures and stuff. So there's a lot going on in here. Um, I'll run you through the sounds. I think some of these I had used before in the intro. But here's the sounds. Yeah, that's the same one as before. Uh, these are different. I made some a lot more, they're a bit phasey. They're a lot more centered and kind of uh, a bit more cut off. So I made those uh, later on. Those are the same, uh, that's the same Garrick's preset. And then I have this kind of gritty synth out to the side. So. Altogether, together those fill up and make a pretty pretty uh powerful sound in my opinion so if we open up the pattern here uh this is i'll show you why things got kind of tricky um when you're doing remakes and when you're making your own tracks it's not just doing remakes but there's a lot of things to take into consideration first of all like making it in the synth there's that part then there's adding effects you want it to have reverb on it you want it to be really dry um all that stuff speaking of which uh let me just see what i have on here uh, I'll play it without effects. Doesn't sound too different, but as you can hear, I have like a lot of reverb on there. So here's some EQ, uh, a little bit of OTT, reverb, which I think this is on a uh, peak controller. Yeah, so it's stuck in there. Um, and this peak controller right under is controlling it. Now, if you don't know this already, um, Brooks talked about this, and I think other people at this point have talked about this, so I feel like most people should know it. Um, if not, you should probably go back and, <laughs> and watch those master classes. But anyway, basically what's happening here is when the signal of the chords play, or you can use this, I use it on leads a lot, whatever, um, you basically open up this peak controller, which is essentially like a sidechain plugin, so it's, it's recognizing a sound. And then you have all these controls when it recognizes the sound, um, how it reacts. So you can see it reacting there and what it's doing. So then what you do is you say link to controller and then you select the peak controller and then it basically 
you can either have it go up when the sound plays um, or you can have it duck down. So in this case, I'm ducking it down. So when the chords are playing, it's dry. And then as soon as the, the chords stop, then it, the reverb comes back up and kind of fills in those gaps. Um, yeah, so if you need to look up a tutorial on how to do that, uh, there's plenty on YouTube or you can comment down below and I can, I don't know, go into more detail, make a video, whatever. Um, but yeah, not too complicated. This Crush, uh, cool plugin, but I'm not using it. Oh, and then this. So Serum Effects is actually sick. Um, I don't know if you guys know it or use it. And I actually, I don't know if it's free or not. I forget if you have to have Serum and then you can use this or if you can just use this as a standalone. But uh, look it up, check it out, because I use this all the time. It's like basically in one container, in one plugin, you have like 50 different things, distortion, compression, filtering, expansion, uh, like a million different things, EQ, all that stuff. And I personally love it. I use it for distortion a lot. It has a lot of different types, tube, soft clip, tape saturation, linear fold, all this different diodes and whatever. Um, yeah, so I, I really love this. And in this case, I'm just using a little bit of soft clipping to sort of make the sound a bit more warm, add a little bit of saturation to it, all that. Um, yeah, so check it out, Serum FX. Um, free balance, I don't know what that's for. Uh, more EQ, a filter for the, uh, the breakdown, and then I have reverb that I'm not using. Okay, so back to the, the piano roll. Um, like I was saying before, there's a couple things to take into consideration when you're, when you're making chords or when you're making really any instrument. Um, and the first thing is sound design, we already covered that. And then the second thing is going to be what your note lengths are, right? If you listen to this, it sounds really sick. If I say go like this, totally different feel. It sounded a little weird because there's a couple layers and I only did it on one layer. But um, yeah, that was a big part on this, trying to recreate this track is trying to figure out how, how long the note lengths are. So that was a big part. And then honestly, I think the trickiest part about these chords is they're kind of, um, they're very, they're like not typical chords. It's not just your regular triad moving up and down with the chords. You can see here, like take a listen to this. Technically, this is kind of all the same chord, but then there's this one note that's moving up and down in the middle, right? So that happens there. Um, and then it happens here again. So it's it's kind of all this thing. A lot of the notes are staying on the same level. You can see basically this note stays pretty much the same across the whole thing. And then these little things like in the end here too, it's going up and down. So it's a very, I would say it's not a very typical kind of chord progression. And it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I mean, it's it, you don't have to do the exact notes for it to sound exactly the same, but I, I spent a lot of time getting these chords. And up until the point where I got to this pattern right here, it just kind of sounded shitty, to be honest. Um, and so finally I nailed the chords down and I'm happy with how they sounded. And um, yeah, I think that's probably a big difference between kind of the beginner producers and someone like, I mean, you know, Brooks, David Guetta and Martin Garrix, like three of the biggest producers is these little details um, making chords that, I don't know, I, I would say these chords just sound like very kind of developed and mature um, compared to just following the regular triads, which is kind of a little bit boring. So anyway, that's that. And I think uh, I think that's it. So let's move on to the leads. Um, this was also one of the sections after I was pretty happy with the chords, I started working on the leads and, and this also gave me a lot of trouble. Um, just when you're doing a remake, it's, it's always tricky trying to get that exact sound. And yeah, it, I, I, I took quite a lot of time, um, getting the sound right for a long time. I just was kind of discouraged and the track didn't sound right. And then finally, once I got the sound I was happy with, then it all kind of came together. So let me show you what I have going on here. I'm pretty sure these are all silent. Um, I have probably like 10 layers playing. Yep, uh, tremor lead. Uh, 
Now this is an interesting lead here. Um, it's, you can see a mel init lead. I just call it that basically because it's essentially an init preset. Uh, I have one oscillator saw here, and I have a tiny bit of white noise, and then it's distorted together a little bit. But it's essentially more or less what an init is. And the 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 powerful thing about a synth like this, it sounds really basic. I'll just play it again. You know, it's literally just a saw, but um, and I've noticed this in a lot of Brooks tracks uh, too. And I think I forget if it was Brooks who said this or someone else, but you have all these leads. They can be wide. They can be kind of mono, whatever. But if you have wide leads, even if you want the sound to be pretty wide in the end you always want to have a mono lead as well. Even if it's low in the mix, it really kind of fills it out, gives the lead a presence. And I've noticed this in a lot of tracks. If I have very wide synths, uh, and then it's like, okay, it sounds a little empty. As soon as I add just, even if it's a very simple saw like this, just straight in the center, it really fills up the leads, fills up the whole sound, and it can make a, a big difference. So, um, yeah, take note. That's the, that's the secret for today. <laughs> Um, not a not a secret, but uh, yeah, a little helpful tip, I guess. Um, here's the next one. A lot wider. Those sound the same. I don't know why I used it twice. Uh, here is an octave. Um, I tried not to go too heavy on the octave. I found when I had this too loud in the mix, it sounded sort of cheesy, but that just helps fill out the frequencies. This is just a click that I made with white noise, uh, just to give it a little extra punch. A couple more synths there, and then I have this vocal sample. And I I like using vocal samples. Um, it's it, it's pretty simple, but once you add that on top of the lead, it's pretty low in the mix too. Um, but it just gives it like this organic sound, and um, kind of. It's an it's an easy way to make your your leads and sounds unique just because it's you know you layer it on top and it gives a little texture. Okay, so let's go and take a look at some of the processing. Now, what I typically like to do, at least um, for remakes, when I'm making my own tracks, I don't care. I can make as many tracks as I want because I'm making it and it's I'm just trying to make the best music. But for my remakes, I try to keep everything ideally on one bus, if not just a couple, because then. It's just easier when you download a project. It's easier to see what's going on, um, you know. So especially for beginners, like when I started out, if I opened up a project um, with like a million different tracks open, it's like, what the hell is going on? Um, unfortunately, in this one, I ended up. Uh, I think I yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I separated these all out into their own channels just because I couldn't quite get the sound that I wanted. Um, it's up to you. I've 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 made some tracks where I just route all of the leads to one bus and it sounds totally okay. Just process them all together like this. Um, and some tracks I end up separating them out if I can't quite get the sound I want. So you can see each of these have their own different leads. Uh, you'll hear different ways from different producers. I know like Mike Williams, I'm pretty sure he just routes all of his leads to one bus and just processes them all together. Whether or not you separate out your leads into different uh, tracks, you always want them to go to the same bus, right? So even though I have, you know, eight different tracks, they all end up going to this bus. It's called the lead bus. And so once you have all your individual sounds processed, they go to a single bus um, on here, then I can do the majority of my processing, which is some EQ, OTT, um, distortion, more EQ, uh, reverb, and a little more distortion and compression. So, uh, without effects, it sounds like this. And with effects, it sounds like this. A lot bigger, a lot wider, and um, obviously the reverb. Um, I don't really think there's anything too special. I mean, going on here, really what I try to do, like, you can see these are all even just stock plugins, EQ, distortion, blood overdrive, and more EQ. Uh, especially with my remix, I tried to keep basically all my plugins either stock or free. Like this is OTT, it doesn't come with FL Studio, but it's free. And it's just, I don't know, I hate when I download an FLP and there's like a bunch of plugins that I don't have. Um, so yeah, uh, this FLP, by the way, is available if you want to 
download it. Um, uh, yeah, you can get all the sounds and all that stuff. And so if you're downloading it, um, yeah, I have pretty much all the processing on here is either stock or free plugins. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's really anything. I already showed you this trick. I'm doing the same thing I did on the chords, which is the reverb is ducking. So, and Brooks already revealed that secret a couple years ago, so I don't think there's anything crazy. I mean, I'm really just using, you know, sound design. That's the main thing, is creating the sounds that sound good from the beginning, and then slight processing if you need to adjust them, if they don't sound perfect, and then, um, yeah, just EQing them uh, to sound right, to get that, you know, certain tone, and then I just use distortion to fill things out. Um, I don't know if I should be telling you this right now because it's not officially ready, <laughs> uh, but just talking about sound design and all that stuff, I actually am about to release my first sound bank. Um, all these, if you've noticed, it says a mel here, a mel here, and if I load up any of these presets, a mel, blah, 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 blah. Um, over the past couple months, I've actually been designing basically through all these projects, including this project right here, like I do. Uh, all these sounds that you hear on the synths are sounds that I created, sound designed, and have packaged up basically to, you know, they're all the sounds that I use for creating remakes and tracks like this, Brooks, Martin Garrix, um, all that stuff. So it's not quite ready yet, uh, but um, I'm gonna be releasing the pack on December 1st. Um, and yeah, so if you're interested in any of that, uh, creating tracks like this, stay tuned for that. Um, I, I personally use a bunch of preset packs, that's how I started out, and um, I mean, obviously I do a lot of sound design now, uh, trying to do these remakes, sometimes you need to tweak a sound in a very certain way to make it sound, you know, if you're trying to replicate a sound, um, but, you know, I just, it's, it's a much, much quicker workflow if you use preset packs um, and, you know, have presets on your synth, so I have a full sound bank for Silent, as well as Serum, if you're interested in any of the sounds you see that's coming soon. So let me know down in the comments and, and stay tuned if you're interested. All right, so coming back to the leads, there's just one more thing that I wanna talk about. Um, we've already, with the chords, we talked about node length, and this is really interesting because as you'll see here, I have the pattern playing, and then I also have this volume automation clip. So let me play you this, uh, this the leads without the volume, and then I'll play it with. So here's without the volume. And I want you to uh, sort of pay special attention to this part right here. Now that sounds pretty shitty in my opinion. Now let's put on this volume automation clip and see what happens. Right? So this is a big trick. I would say maybe of anything in this masterclass, this might be the biggest secret. It's not really a secret, but um, something that can really kind of transform the sound. Uh, going from something that sounds very basic and kind of static, like I just played you, um, and then it transforms it into this again. Right, okay, so I have two things going on here. So the first thing is this note. To make this note here punch more, instead of making it louder or adding a synth or anything, what I actually have going on is the volume cuts away right here. So. There's reverb on the tail, and then that all completely cuts out. So I'll just play it without one more time. Right, it sounds, it just goes right in, there's no variation. Versus now, it cuts right off. So that makes a huge difference, and it really makes this note stand out. Now the other thing is, this note, you can see it's really long, and if I didn't have this volume automation clip, it's just very static, keeps going. Instead of cutting this note off right here, we actually do this weird kind of wobbly volume automation. So it's kind of a mix in between. Um, so let me play it without one more time. Really boring. And then we add the volume automation clip and it sounds like this. Um, and then I have a couple more things like that here. Versus without. It's a... Uh, pretty subtle, but it does make a difference. 
And so things like that, um, I think that's the only one I have on this. But on some tracks I've made, I'll have like volume automation clips, I'll have cutoff automation clips. Um, also what you can do with these volume automation clips is you can actually open this up and turn on an LFO. Uh, so you can automate these LFOs, you can automate tension, you can automate the speed. That sounds absolute shit, but you get the point. Um, so automation clips and having things change as the sound goes on once you start getting into the like really fine details that's when your track really starts to come alive um, and like I said in this track in particular I don't have a ton of that but even just this one simple volume automation clip makes a huge difference so keep that in mind I guess that's my one my one secret for the master class what else oh yeah so then I also have this white noise so it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it makes a huge difference, but let me play the lead without. And now here's with the white noise. White noise, like I said earlier, it's pretty subtle. You don't think it makes much of a difference, but even a tiny bit of white noise in the background added together with a synthesizer, added together just even that little click, it really makes a big difference, makes things pop out. Um, it kind of changes the sound a lot. So uh, if you're ever in doubt, if something sounds a little empty, a little watered down, doesn't sound full enough, try adding white noise and I think you'll, you'll, you'll see a big difference. Okay, I guess moving down here, we have these drums. Uh, these are pretty basic, here's the kick. Now this is actually pretty cool. Um, I had been using a different kick for most of the time and then finally I think maybe in the last, I don't know, maybe the last like 10% of finishing up the details of the track, I actually sampled the kick from this track, from like I do. So this is actually a sampled kick from the original track. And um, so that turned out really clean. Then we have these claps here. Um, we have some toms down here. And then we have a bunch of white noise. So I guess I'll just play all these drums together. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple. I'm not gonna do too much detail about this. Um, you know, you see it literally in like every how to make future house tutorial nowadays. Um, but kick, snaps. One thing actually that is a little bit cool is Brooks seems to really like using snaps instead of claps or maybe on top of claps. So here are the samples that I actually used. Um, I think this is a clap. There's another clap. But then I actually use snaps as well. Yeah, so this snap right here, um, it's a bit different sound than I think most producers use. It's very snappy. That sounds really dumb because it's a snap, but um, it's kind of a lot. It stands out a bit more than maybe a normal clap. Normal claps are a bit more kind of like white noise and um, a bit softer in a way. So yeah, I think Brooks uses a lot of snaps and... Uh, so that's what I did there. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty simple stuff, you know, just rides coming in. And then in the second half, I have these offbeat hi-hats. So here's the ride and the hi-hats. You know, pretty simple stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the main focus of, of this track, I think doing this video is to show you all the synths um, and not the drums, because a drum beat is just, you know, for, for house music, there's nothing super crazy in that. It's just a matter of taking time, finding samples, and and all that stuff. So I think that's pretty much the drop, and let's move on. I have just a couple more things to show you before we end this video. So if you guys haven't seen it already, I actually have a completely separate video on how I made this uh, sort of talk box vocoder sort of style that David Guetta does. Um, so I'll link that down in the description or maybe I can put it up here somewhere in the video so you guys can find it if you haven't seen it already. Um, but this is, 
ah, I just, I completely love this sound. It's so cool, and I've tried to use it even in some of my tracks. Um, it's really straightforward, and you'll see that in just a second, but it just has this, it's such a unique sound, and if you do it correctly, it, it, I don't know, it's very powerful, kind of emotional sort of stuff. Um, so basically what I have going on here, we'll start with the bass. Bass is super simple. I just have like one or two presets playing. Um, yeah, I literally have two, uh, no, three, three presets. So here's this one. Very simple sounds and then a sub bass. Nothing special there. I have these chords. Just big, big saw chords, nothing special. I do have one interesting uh, chord that I made, which is, which one is it? Yeah, this one is very interesting. Basically what I did is I made these big super saws and then I added a phaser on it, um, as well as this weird combs filter. And so if I play just the synth by itself, I'm basically putting that kind of on certain hits and by itself it sounds kind of shitty and then when you put it with the rest of the chords it adds this very like sort of warpy sound that fits well with the vocoder. So that's what that is. Now here's the important part up, up top which is, I already showed you in the video so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but this is the main synth sound. So that's the main synth sound, and um, the thing that really makes this stand out uh, is hopefully you can hear there's all these pitch bends, and um, I have this LFO, like I said, you can enable, enable this LFO on the, uh, on the pitch bend, and then have it kind of go into these wavy sections, right, so it sort of wobbles up and down, and yeah, I covered that all in the video, so I'm going to uh, not really say anything more about that. The one thing I actually changed between uh, that video and the final version, which is this, is in the other video I used a, uh, a talk, uh, sorry, in the other video I used a vocoder. In this video, I actually used a talk box um, in this final version. So what's the difference between a vocoder and a talk box? Well, I actually still have this up here. So I'm gonna play this like this. Uh, this is what it sounded like originally. This is included in FL Studio. It's called a uh, Vocodex. It's a fruity vocoder. Um, I'm not going to explain how to use that, but you can look it up online. This is a really cool plugin that mimics a talk box instead of a vocoder. Now, I don't know the exact difference between the two. They're kind of similar, but a little different. This is a totally free plugin. It's called MDA Talk Box, so check it out. And all you have to do is set it up. You uh, switch one of these to the left, one of these to the right. And then when I enable this, now it sounds like this instead. And the reason I switched that is because I listened to David Guetta, and I think he's actually using a talk box, not a vocoder, even though, like I said, they're kind of similar. Um, so yeah, that's the talk box, and it, it just sounds a little bit, I don't know, more human, I guess. It lets a little bit more of the vocals through than the talk box or something like that. Um, yeah, so, and then we add all those elements up and it sounds like this again. So like I said, if you want to check out exactly how I made that, go check out the video and I explained that all in detail. Um, but I just, like I said, I absolutely love that sound. I think it's super unique to David Guetta, like kind of incorporating this sound into like house music in this really powerful way. I think that's super dope. So that's that. And then I think the only last part that I want to talk about is maybe in the intro. Um, I just have this uh, this couple elements here. So we'll just go through that really quick and then we'll be done. Okay, so this is, in my opinion, it's a pretty iconic sound at this point uh, with how popular this track is. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent sure on this because I obviously don't have access to the original track, but 
I know Brooks likes to use, uh, he says in one of his videos that he likes to use FL keys and this Rhodes uh, preset. So I, I want to say I'm like 90, 99% sure or something like that, that in the original track, this is actually, this stock plugin may be what they used to create this Rhodes sound. But anyway, um, basically if you load up the, the road sound and then you put the stereo all the way down, or sorry, the pan, I think it sounds like this when you open it up. It kind of like wobbles back and forth, so if you just put that to the center. That's what the sound is, and then uh, obviously I created the pattern, and then I think I just added like a little bit of distortion. Some EQ, yeah, basically cutting out the high frequencies, and then a little bit of distortion. So this is without effects. And I basically just made it warm kind of in your face. Um, and that's that. So yeah, I think, I don't know if, if that's actually what they used or not, but it sounds really close to what they used. And I don't know if it is, I think that's really cool. I think, I think it's hilarious when big producers use stock samples and sounds and stuff because it's like everyone gets pissed at them but it sounds fucking sick so yeah those are the intro chords um pretty pretty simple i mean really the thing that makes it in this intro is the vocals uh then here we have this bass which adds in so we have the chords and the bass we have a couple different clap loops and and stuff like that Um, but that's pretty much it. Then it goes into the build and then back to the drop. So yeah, that's the full project there, the whole 74 tracks. And somehow my computer is still managing to uh, handle the project totally fine. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, hopefully that video wasn't too long. Uh, hopefully it was like under an hour at least. Um, but yeah, I got a couple requests of walking through this and I've been thinking to myself that I wanted to sort of walk through this track because it's really cool. I mean, it, it's it's not often that someone, including myself, I've this is the first time I've recreated an entire track. So it's essentially like I kind of have the original FLP now, which is, I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were able to, I don't know, pick up some tips from that. Um, unfortunately, you know, most of these master classes that like Brooks are doing at ADE and whatever, uh, is live so people can ask questions. I would really love to do that, but obviously this is a video. Um, so what I'm going to do is if you have any questions about this class, about this walkthrough, about this track, whatever, like I said, the FLP is available. So I'm going to link that down below. But also if you have any questions, um, just shoot me a comment down below and I may make like a second video if there ends up being enough comments. Otherwise, I'll just write you a comment and try to answer that as best as I can. If there's anything I forgot about processing, if there's any little tips and tricks you want to know, because I have the entire, I stole Brooks' computer and I have his entire track. Um, yeah, anyway, so I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you're interested in getting any of these presets, I am coming out with SoundMank very soon, but don't tell anyone because it's top secret for now. Um, and yeah, I will tell you what my website is very soon. It's not quite ready. Um, but if someone finds it, the products are available already now. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, if you have any questions, link those down below, put those in the comment section and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Otherwise stay tuned for next week. I'll be coming out with a lot more videos. Thank you so much guys for watching. Um, and I think that's it. My name is Amel. Uh, have a good day, happy producing, all that stuff. I'll get you in the next one, guys. Peace. Holy shit, it's so smoky. <laughs>